Hello everybody, my name is Sahar al -Etr. I'm a biomedical scientist um, and a microbiologist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, a new technology where we're going to use amoeba cysts as natural containers for the transport and storage of pathogens. Um, we got tasked with this by the government because they needed better methods for the transport of pathogens from the field to the laboratory at room temperatures without losing the, the viability of the actual pathogen um, of interest. Even though um, most people just get the DNA and that's fine, sometimes you actually need the pathogen itself to do uh, additional characterization. Now, existing methods uh, for transport in the field are basically a modification of a swab with a transport medium um, associated. And usually, if you're thinking of uh, storage, storage containers are uh, cryogenic vials that are typically frozen at minus 80 degrees. Sample cleanup and enrichment now occurs only in pathogen-specific transport or culture media. And these are um, virtually good for up to 72 hours only uh, in the field, and then you have to get them into the laboratory. And even then, you deal with a, loss, with a lot of loss of actual um, mobile elements um, in, the in the pathogen. So uh, we are basically proposing to use nature's own natural containers for this. Um, environmental amoeba, which are present everywhere in the environment, uh, in tap water, in the uh, soil, um, everywhere, uh, typically exist as trophozoites, which what you, is what you can see in uh, your left. And this is what the active feeding form are. And when you stress them or you deprive them from food or uh, you expose them to changing temperatures or predations, they go ahead and make these uh, cysts or they insist. And basically what that is is a very thick polysaccharide layer um, resembling cellulose that is very, very tough and extremely resistant um, to uh, changes in, in the environment. So this technology basically takes advantage of uh, the fact that many pathogens are known to survive in these amoeba cysts for many, many years and to emerge when the conditions are better and the amoeba actually uh, exist. So we basically decided to make use of Mother Nature and we have developed the first living system for the transport and storage of pathogens. So the idea here is um, if you are in the field or in a situation where you need to take a patient uh, sample, um, and in a lot of cases you're away from a proper microbiology lab that can do that, uh, the actual assessment for you rapidly, you will have this um, device that will contain on the bottom um, amoeba in a uh, buffer that simply does not support, provide additional nutrients for the amoeba, so the amoeba are insistent. And in the top, you have your rich buffer and a swab system. You take your sample using the swab, and what happened is once you inoculate uh, this device, your pathogen of interest is represented here in, uh, as a red bacteria, while your skin or environmental contaminant is represented in green. And once you break this membrane in the middle of the two compartments, the rich medium in the top makes um, contact with the amoeba, and so the cysts will actually exist and make the active feeding trophozoites, which will uh, feed on both your pathogen of interest as well as your contaminant. Because amoeba naturally eat bacteria in the environment, they're gonna go ahead and eat any contaminant while only your pathogen of interest will survive. It'll go ahead and replicate and um, then eventually the amoeba, the trophozoite, will run out of food and it'll go ahead and insist. Once you've reached that stage, you basically, um, that this, this container um, containing sample can sit there at um, ambient temperatures 
for any length of time you want till you have the time to transport it into the laboratory. Uh, and then once you get to the laboratory, you basically reverse the process, you go ahead and add rich medium, and the amoeba will naturally spit out whatever uh, pathogen is in it, and, and then uh, you go ahead and you proceed normally with pathogen ID and um, recovery. Um, the advantages of this system is, as I mentioned, that it uh, can basically exist at any ambient temperature. We have demonstrated the ability of this system uh, to uh, basically uh, sit in the environment for anything from um, one to six weeks at temperatures ranging from four degrees to 42 degrees with uh, various humidity conditions with no loss of pathogen viability. More importantly, we can detect as few as 10 bacterial colony forming units, which are really 10 individual uh, bacteria. The system uh, can detect the gram-negative bacteria, uh, for example, Acinetobacter bomanii, which is causing big problems right now in hospital settings, as well as gram positives such as MRSA, again a big problem in hospital. You can also detect fastidious pathogens, uh, things like chlam chlamydia, uh, select agents, as well as some viruses, uh, especially those that cause uh, gastroenteritis in humans and animals. Uh, the most important thing is the emerging microbes do not show any enhanced resistance to either antibiotics or biocides, which is what you would naturally use to kill those strains, things like bleach and um, alcohol. And they do not show any mutations that are due to growth in amoeba. Uh, now, the system does have limitations. It will not work for anaerobic bacteria because we do need that um, top area to be uh, aerated, and it will not likely to work for enveloped viruses that need a little bit of the uh, membranes of mammalian cells. Uh, we are currently building a prototype device uh, for, to, for testing in field deployment, and what it will have is in addition to the two compartments, the top is going to have the swab atta attached to it, and a lower lock is going to allow um, the swab to sit in the, uh, at the first a notch where it will be separated from um, the bottom compartment with the amoeba using a uh, membrane. And once you take your sample, then you um, get into the second um, uh, stage of the lock and that allows the swab to break right through. And then you basically uh, just mix it up by uh, inverting up and down and it's stable to sit there, then you can get it uh, into the laboratory. Uh, the advantage of this system over what's available right now is I mentioned it can be kept at ambient temperature for any, for te for any time you, duration you want. You're not limited by having to get it to the laboratory within 72 hours. It can also withstand temperature fluctuations, and there is no requirement for freezing or refrigeration or anything like that. Uh, in addition to that, bacterial pathogens maintain their clinical phenotype with no loss of virulence, and that's because uh, they are growing intracellularly, and uh, we have actually demonstrated that they, when they come out of this system, they have similar rates of survival in mammalian cells just as typically grown macrophage uh, strains. And macrophages are the body's natural uh, immune cells, the first thing that will uh, cause pathogens when um, they invade a human uh, being. Now, since amoeba only uh, feeds on bacteria, Samples that are uh, contaminated with patient or environmental flora are actually cleaned up during your transport, which is a bonus we were not thinking up of when we, um, when we developed this. And the system actually enriches for your pathogen of interest because it, it replicates very well within the amoeba. To, to summarize here, we are um, seeing this as one, a sample collection device from the field or, or hospital to the laboratory, and we see our um, customers here being either the military or um, civilian physicians 
uh, that are uh, deployed in areas that don't have access to highly refined microbiology laboratories. And again, the current practice is only typically uses a swab uh, with a, a media. We also have an advantage here is the media that we have will work for all of those pathogens. We do not need a specific media for gram positives or for gram negatives. One media works for everything. In addition, uh, because the, um, uh, the uh, amoeba will actually eat your environmental or uh, medical um, flora, this system will decontaminate contaminated samples and this is a huge, huge problem, especially in field locations where you can't get a clean sample. In addition, we see this also being used as a storage system in research laboratories because in addition to it not requiring uh, freezing, it also will keep um, the samples, the pathogen samples, virulent. It will, imp it will keep them in their natural clinical stage rather than having them lose, uh, become lab adapted. Um, in, uh, in addition to that, um, this system is just really very, very effective with every pathogen that we have put in it. And so there are many additional um, uh, pathogens that will survive in there as well. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, time. Uh, my name is Sahar el Etr, and if you need any additional information, please contact Catherine Elizondo at the IPO uh, office in, in uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab.